income tax 2022-2023 IRA distributions. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. When looking at our income tax formula, we're focused once again on line one, that being income. Remembering that the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement, although a strange one where we have income minus the equivalent of expenses being deductions equals the equivalent of net income, this being taxable income, our objective being the opposite of a normal income statement, that being to get as low a taxable income as possible. So with regards to the income line, then the question is, is it income? If it's income, do we have to include it in taxable income? That's the general concept. We're now focused in here on the IRA and whether or not we have income with relation to an IRA. Most of this information is going to come from the Form 1040 Instructions Tax Year 2022 line instructions. You can find at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov first page of the form 1040 we're focused here on line four and so let's get into the general concepts of this now when we think about an IRA we're thinking about a benefit that the tax code might provide trying to incentivize us to save for retirement so the general idea would be we as decision makers are quite good at the day-to-day -day decisions but we're not as good oftentimes with those long-term decisions possibly sacrificing in the current day for a bigger benefit at a later point in time in this case saving for retirement so the government tries to put incentives in place through the tax code to get us to do certain things such as save for retirement so different kinds of retirement plans then could be through the work which would be the uh, 401ks the 403bs and so on and then if we don't have a retirement plan through work or if we're able to also invest in something that's not tied to our employment which is what we're focused generally on here we've got the ira distributions so you can think about the general strategy as being somewhat similar between you know all of these kind of retirement type of strategies the iris basically trying to incentivize people to save for retirement by deferring the tax uh the tax implications of income now, if you're investing in a 401k or a 403b because you get these benefits through work, then you're going to put this money in possibly uh, just out of your earnings on a weekly or monthly basis whenever you get paid. And that distribution into the retirement plan will be reflected on the form W-2, reducing box one and reporting it in box, I think, 12 to show to show that distribution. Therefore, it's quite easy in those situations to report the W-2 income that has been reduced for any contributions to a, a retirement plan. But if you're having a retirement plan contributions that's in the form of an IRA, not going through the employment, then that's when you have this above the line deduction when you put the money into uh, the IRA. And so you get the tax benefit at that point in time, which is more easily seen on the first page of the form 1040. Now that's really just going to be a, a deferral of the taxes because you're basically lowering the income at the point in time you put the money in. That means at retirement, when you pull the money out or possibly before retirement, then you're going to have to, you're going to have to pay taxes at the minimum and because that's the cost right so now when you pull the money out you're gonna have to pay the taxes and include that in income now if you don't wait till retirement age you will then generally also have to pay a penalty on it because the whole deferral process was based on the idea that you're basically locking your money away for retirement and if you if you don't do that if you pull it out early 
then you have to pay the taxes that you deferred, which makes sense, but also you get, you get penalized on it. That's the general notion. All right, keeping that in mind, we're looking at the IRS distributions. This is when the money is coming out of an IRA account, which is, which is gonna be the retirement type of account. And also I just wanna point out when you think about these kind of retirement type of accounts, people often think of them as completely separate kind of things, like an IRA or a 401k is different than investing in a mutual fund. It's not really different because usually the investments that are, are making up an IRA or a 401k or a 401 or a 403b or whatever are usually some form of mutual fund. The only thing that's different about it is they're under the umbrella now of some kind of retirement account, which has this implications with regards to uh, the taxes. So now we're thinking about these investments that are under the umbrella, usually stocks and bonds of an IRA that are being distributed, meaning we're taking the money out and now the financial institution is going to be reporting because that could be an income triggering event given the fact that we got the tax benefit when we put it in the form typically being used is the 1099-R. So we should then receive a form 1099-R showing the total amount of any distribution from your IRA before income tax or other deductions were withheld. The amount uh, should be shown in box one of form 1099-R. Now note that if you're doing taxes for uh, older individuals past retirement age, you would expect to receive 1099 Rs. That would be a normal kind of process because that's when you would expect the retirements to be happening. And those could be taxable events at that point in time. And we'd have to do tax planning based on how much tax they would owe based on how much they're gonna pull out uh, uh, of these kind of plans. However, you also might get like a 1099 R when someone's still in their working years. And that's scary because that might mean that they pull the money out early not only triggering a taxable event, but possibly substantial penalties. So that's the thing to be careful about. So un unless otherwise noted in line 4A and 4B instructions, an IRA uh, includes a traditional IRA, Roth IRA, Simplified Employee Pension SEP IRA, and Saving uh, Incentive Match Plan for employees, a simple IRA. So let's just break those down uh, a little bit here. So a normal IRA, is kind of similar to like a 401k plan where you get the benefit of putting the money in and deferring it instead of reducing the money when you put it in in line one of the form 1040 it's going to be an above the line deduction because it wasn't pulled out of like your w-2 wages and instead it has to be that above the line deduction a roth ira is is a situation where now you don't get the tax benefit when you put the money in but you get the tax benefit basically when you take the money out why would they do that? The government, once again, trying to incentivize you to put money and save it. Now, what if you're in a situation where you don't have that much tax right now at this point in time because your income is fairly low, or you think that the government is spending massive amounts of money and at the point of retirement, the tax rates are gonna have to go up at some point in time or something like that. So I'd rather take the hit now than pay the tax later because something's gonna hit the fan at some point. You might think something like that. Well, in that case, then it wouldn't be an incentive to use the IRA because you're not paying much taxes or you think the taxes will be worse later when you're gonna be hit with them. So then you could put money in using a Roth IRA where you basically pay the taxes now, but you get like the benefit of the earnings. And when you take it out, you don't have the, you get the benefit at that point. So it would be nice to have a little bit in both something like a Roth and a, a normal IRA. So at the point of retirement, we can live on income, which is only part taxable, right? So if I got, if I lived on a hundred thousand and half of it came from an IRA and half from a Roth IRA, only the half, the 50,000 from the taxable IRA would be subject to tax, which means I could be living on a hundred thousand, but only paying taxes on the 50,000, which would be a lower income threshold. And, and that means in our progressive tax system, we'd be paying a substantially less amount of tax, right? So that would be ideal if possible. But again, most people are putting money in from a 401k plan. And so they're somewhat kind of limited tied to work. And we'll talk about those possibly later. Then you got the simplified employee pension, uh, a SEP plan. Now this is gonna be kind of like a 401k plan, but it's gonna be for smaller businesses because 401k plans are quite expensive to manage. 
And if you're a sole proprietor, you might set up a set type of plan for yourself to be able to put more money in than you otherwise would in like an IRA. We might talk more about that when we get to Schedule C's and a saving incentive match, a simple, same, similar kind of concept. That's kind of like a 401k for a small business trying to mirror some of the benefits that can be provided and possibly giving more ability to the owner to put money into something like an IRA to get a tax benefit from it without the burdensome prospect of making a 401k, which is quite burdensome. So accept as otherwise uh, provided next, leave line 4A blank and enter the total distribution from for, uh, form 1099R box one on line 4B. So remember, we're talking about the distribution side of it. We're taking the money out now that had been put in to say an IRA. So exception one, enter the total distribution on line 4A if you rolled over roll over part or all of the distribution from one a uh, Roth uh, Roth IRA to another Roth IRA or uh, IRA other than a Roth IRA to a qualified plan another IRA other than a Roth IRA so this becomes important with any any money that you have under the umbrella of a retirement plan we're talking here about IRAs but similar kind of concepts if they're in like a 401k plan or something if if you want to roll that into some other investment like another IRA then because you want to switch financial institutions for example you want to go from one financial institution to another uh then you, you can't you got to be very careful careful in that process because if you if it's shown as you distributing the money and then reinvesting the money now you're going to get hit with the tax for pulling the money out and you're going to be hit with the with possibly penalties for pulling it out early so if you're going to try to move from one financial institution to the other it's usually pretty easy to do because you can talk to the financial institution that you want to do business with and they will usually quite quite happily try to help you out to, to make it a rollover distribution and make sure it's properly recorded as a rollover and shown on the 1099 as a rollover so that so that you can tell the IRS, look, at, yeah, it went from here to here, but it's not a distribution. It shouldn't be a triggering tax event and I shouldn't be penalized on it. So also enter rollover next to line 4B. So if the total distribution was rolled over, enter zero on line 4B. So this also applies if you're talking to anybody that's switching jobs or something like that, or they want to go to another financial institution or something like that. You want to be able to tell them, make sure that you are categorizing something as a rollover, not as a distribution. Talk to the financial institutions, make sure that, you know, they're, they're working that out. So, so it's not going to be a distribution, but a rollover. So if the total distribution wasn't rolled over, enter the part not rolled over on line 4B unless exception exceptional outstanding two applies to the part not rolled over. Generally, a rollover must be made within 60 days after the day you receive the distribution. So there's this time limit. Usually these days, it can be kind of a pretty much same day if you're doing a, a rollover from one institution to another. Otherwise, you've got this kind of day limitation. So you want to make sure that you're within the threshold. So for more details on rollovers, you can see publication 590A and publication 590B. So if you rolled over the distribution into a qualified plan and you made the rollover in 2023, include a statement explaining what you did. So exception two, if any of the following apply, enter the total distributions on line 4A and see form 8606 and its instructions to figure the amount to enter on line 4B. One, if you received a distribution from an IRA other than a Roth IRA and you made non-deductible contributions to any of your tra uh, traditional or SEP IRAs for 2022 or an earlier year. If you made non-deductible contributions to these IRAs for 2022, see publication 590A and publication 590B too. You received a distribution from a Roth IRA but if either A or B below applies, enter zero on line 4B, you don't have to see form 8606 or its instructions. A, distribu distribution code T. So notice these are gonna be the codes in the form 1099. So now you've got a code T is shown in box uh, seven of form 1099R and you made a contribution including conversion to a Roth IRA for 2016 or an earlier year. 
B distribution code Q is shown in box seven of form 1099R. So when you look at those distribution codes, those are gonna be an indication of like the kind of distribution that is put in place. And we can look at the instructions for the 1099R to give us more detail of what those distribution codes are. So if we have more exotic distribution code, instead of just like a one or something like that or seven, then, then you could, then we can, you know, research it from that point. Three, you converted part or all of the traditional SEP, SEP or simple IRA to a Roth IRA in 2022. Four, you had a 2021 or 2022 IRA contribution returned to you with the related earnings or less, uh, or less any loss by the due date, including extensions of your tax return for that year. Five, you made excess contributions to the IRA for an earlier year and had them returned to you in 2022. So we have some uh, issues with regards to the limits of how much we can put into an IRA in the case that you over put into the IRA and then you got it returned, for example. So, you, okay, so six, you uh, recharacterize part or all of the contribution to a Roth IRA as contribution to another type of IRA or vice versa. So exception three, if all or part of the distribution is a qualified charitable distribution, a QCD, enter the total distribution on line 4A. So if the total amount distributed is a QCD, enter zero on line 4B. So if we had a distribution from, from a retirement plan, it's usually going to be, you know, a taxable, a, a, it might be a taxable event for us. So in some cases you might say, well, I'd I, maybe I'd, if, I, if there's some way I can give that distribution as say a charitable contributions, then possibly I can get a tax benefit in some way possibly by going directly to the charitable. So that would be more of an unusual kind of situation, but possible opportunities uh, for tax planning if, if you have, if you would like to you know, look into that in more detail. So if only part of the distribution is a QCD, uh, enter the part that is not a QCD on line 4B, unless exception two applies to that part, enter QCD next to line 4B. A QCD, qualified uh, charitable distribution, is a distribution made directly by a trustee of your IRA, other than an ongoing SEP or simple IRA, to an organization eligible to receive tax deductible contributions, in essence, a charity with certain exceptions. You must have been at least 70 and a half when the distribution was made. Generally, your total uh, QCDs, qualified charitable contributions, for the year can't be more than $100,000. On a joint return, your spouse can also have a QCD up to 100,000. The amount of the QCD is limited to the amount that would otherwise be included in your income. So if your IRA includes non-deductible contributions, the distribution uh, is first considered to be paid out of otherwise, of otherwise taxable income, see publication, 590B for more details. So if that applies to you, you can do some more research there. Caution, you can't claim a charitable contribution deduction for any QCD not included in your income, which kind of makes sense, right? You're trying to do some tax planning, saying there's gonna be a taxable event. What if I contribute this to the charity? If you do that, is it possible that I don't have to include the income that would otherwise be included as income? in income if that's the case you already got a benefit by not including it in income and would be double dipping if you were able to not include it in income and get a charitable deduction for it right that would be a double dip exception four if all or part of the distribution is a health savings account an hsa funding distribution f uh, hfd enter the total distribution on line 4a if the total amount distributed is an hfd and you elect to include it from income enter zero on line 4b if only part of the distribution is an hfd and you elect to include uh, exclude that part from income enter the part that isn't an hfd on line 4b unless exception two applies to that part enter HFD next to line 4B. So another somewhat unusual transaction where you're gonna have the 
distribution go directly here. So an HFD is a distribution made directly by the trustee of your IRA, other than an ongoing SEP or simple IRA to your HSA. So once again, the idea being, well, there's gonna be a distribution, possibly a required distribution. I'm gonna to have to pay taxes on it. Is there some way I can distribute it to say my, my uh, HSA health savings account and possibly have a tax benefit in that way? So if eligible, you can generally elect to exclude an HFD from your income once in your lifetime. So once in your lifetime. So you can't exclude more than the limit. Limits, why couldn't I remember anything about limits? An HSA contribution or more than the amount that would otherwise be included in your income. So obviously the idea being you're gonna get, you're gonna get a benefit of excluding it and you can't exclude an, an amount that would be more than the amount that you would you would have you know had to put in the income. So if your IRA includes non-deductible contributions such as a HFD, uh, is first considered to be paid out of the otherwise taxable income. So for more details, if you want to dive into that in more detail, publication 969. Caution: the amount of an HFD reduces the amount you can contribute to your HSA for the year. So you got your contribution limits to an HSA, which of course will be impacted, which would be reasonable, you would think, if you have this kind of system uh, that you're looking into for your tax benefit purposes. So if you fail to maintain eligibility for an HSA for the 12 months following the month of the HFD, you may have to report the HFD as income and pay additional uh, pay an additional tax. You can see form 8889 and instructions part three for that. More than one exception applies. What if you have more than one of these exceptions applying here? That's gonna really complicate things. So if more than one exception applies, include statements showing the amount of each exception instead of making an entry next to line 4B. For example, line 4B, 1000 rollover and 500 HFD, but you do not need to attach a statement if only exception two and one other uh, exception apply more than one distribution. If you or your spouse is filing jointly received more than one distribution, figure the taxable amount of each distribution and enter the total of the taxable amounts on line 4B, enter total amount of those distributions on line 4A. Caution, you may have to pay an additional tax if you received an early distribution from your IRA. So that's the standard thing we wanna basically keep in mind. The, the, the point of putting money into a retirement plan is that the IRS is giving us a tax benefit, a deferral typically for putting the money away. If we try to take the money out early, even though it's our money, then that we're gonna get hit with a penalty because we, we took the agreement of getting the tax deferral benefit and locking the money away. That's kind of like the whole, that's the bargain basically. So, and the total wasn't rolled over. So see the instructions for schedule two, line eight for details. More information, for more information about IRAs, you can see publication 590A and publication 590B on the IRS website, irs.gov.